I'm doing this next video vlog style mainly because it has been really hot this past week. I am recording this the first Friday in August, and it's been about a hundred pretty much all week long. And so I am going to we're trying to do this just do this vlog style so we can get it done fast and then enjoy the the air conditioning and not and not deal with the heat. So Every few months, YouTube finds some new way to poop the bed. As of the time of recording this, there is a lawsuit that has been filed, a class action lawsuit related to the apocalypse. Um, the apocalypse has honestly has been going on for quite some time. It's probably going to find, YouTube's going to find some new way by the time this video goes live on the 23rd of August. They will, they will have found some new way to screw things up. And whenever this happens, this leads to a mass exit to some other service, like VidMe or Dailymotion or something else. Complaints are made about the various issues of YouTube, about the hashtag, where, where's the fair use, if it's a copyright thing or something else. And then YouTube sends out a whole bunch of market research sub surveys to video producers like me when nothing in particular really seems to change I mean, the surveys happen, they have a variety of questions, I fill them out, I put in there, hey, here's what's going on, here's what you can actually do to fix the site. They don't do some of this, or they don't have the option for me to, to give this information. So, to be honest, I found the options, just, they just don't reflect the things that need to change about YouTube's features. They focus on a particular issue, copyright, usually copyright education, as opposed to not properly handling copyright stuff behind the scenes. Like, for example, handling issues like the copyright strikes related to the um, video game. The, the, the composer's name just fell out of my head. I apologize for that. Um, and also just general stuff in terms of user experience and how things work behind the scenes. They don't really give any options on how to improve those either. But these are things which YouTube needs to change and other hosting sites can learn from as well. So, considering the internet has become something of a massive focus group, I have decided to basically give my list of the five features that YouTube needs and which other hosting sites can learn from. And or, could, or could consider implementing. Number one, adjust permissions for scheduled videos. So here's how YouTube handles scheduled videos. And VidMe handles it this way as well. So does Dailymotion. You upload the video and you set it to go live at a certain date and time. Um, and during that time, between when you put up the video and when it goes public, it is completely private, no one can view it but you. I bring this up because when it comes to Patreon, which is becoming, due to the apocalypse, a bigger and bigger way for YouTube content creators and video producers to make their living, being able to make videos available early is more and more important. But you still need to make your consistent deadline of putting out your videos and having them be live in public on a regular basis. And again, ideally, at around the same time. For example, my videos always go live on 6 a.m. on weekdays. Now, if you're going to post your video on Patreon, the best you can do is mark it as unlisted. But you can't schedule a video as unlisted in the sense that have the video be uploaded as unlisted and go live at a particular time, go public at a particular time. And that's what needs to fix, because Patreon lets you do that. You can mark a video, a post, blog post, what have you, as patrons only. And then Patreon, patrons of that particular backing level, however much that may be, they will get to view that video content or whatever, video, blog post, whatever, and then once it hit, reaches a certain point, on that day it will go public. YouTube can learn from this. 
VidMe can learn from this. Other video content providers can learn from this and go, okay, what we're going to do is when it is let the user select what privileges a so access privileges a video has for when it goes live, for when it is uploaded and scheduled. To choose either private or unlisted. Obviously not public, because if you're just uploading it public, then you're not scheduling anything. Um, so that needs to change. This is also kind of doubly an issue, because yes, you can just go online at the relevant time and change it yourself from unlisted to public, but if you are in a position where you do not have access to an internet connection, because you're sick, you're on vacation, and you've built up a buffer to keep videos going out while you are indisposed, you don't have an a way to go flip that switch. That's the whole point of scheduling videos. It flips that switch by itself. So, that. Number two, comment moderation. It has sadly become a joke, a very sad joke, that the comments on YouTube are toxic and horrible and abysmal and just blah. It is not surprising this happens. Comments on lots of places on the internet are terrible. But when it comes to building a community on YouTube around your channel, it makes it hard to do that well. To put this another way, I trust user, I, I trust YouTube or rely on YouTube to build up to get new subscribers, to get new people watching my shows and following my shows and to join a community. But if a community is actually going to happen, if I'm ever going to get enough people involved and get people interested in talking about the videos to have a real community, that's the kind of thing which I would expect or anticipate to happen on my blog site, at WordPress, or somewhere else, because then you can have a better conversation. Yes, there's a comments field on YouTube, and you can chat, and lots of people are able to have a reasonable conversation on you, the comments section for YouTube channels, for smaller YouTube channels, like mine, people who are bigger than mine, but not huge, like my caliber, that sort of thing. But once you get really big, like Sundry, like, um, like, well, Angry Joe, like, Retronauts, well, like, like Jeremy Parrish, like, um, the Vlogbrothers channel, you reach a point where once you get some significant size to your subscriber base and the people who are active in the comments, as things are now, it is hard to keep things moderated so that you can have an actual discussion without trolls coming in and taking it over. This is why some video producers, women, burn off comments entirely because no good can come of this. Because they run into so much crap in the comments of their videos that it's just not worth it anymore. You can't actually build a community. You can't have a discussion there. You should take that and you move it over to your site. And so when people watch your videos and you watch them on your site with your ads and your just general wrapper around it, then they, with the comments there, you have more control over it, things tend to flow better, and if people are being unruly or jackasses or treating other users, other members of your community like dirt, you can handle it which you can't do on YouTube. The best you can do is you can hide comments. You can say, this user's comments are hidden. Not, this user can't comment. This user's comments are hidden. To a certain degree, having the comments be hidden works a degree because as far as the user is concerned, they don't know that they've been muted, that they, that they are just shouting into the void and no one can hear them. But there's got to be a better way, because it also because once they do find out, there's nothing, there's no way to stop them from coming back with a sock puppet account to 
continue being a jackass. So YouTube needs to redo or overhaul their comp their moderation tools. Other sites should do this as well to give moderators more options for dealing with posters who are a problem. Obviously, you can't delete accounts. I'm not expecting anything like that. But they need a way to not just mute posters from blocking on videos or commenting on videos, but to sort of actively block them. I mean, if not at the user account level, there's a way to do this with IP address or something like that. That would work as well if there's someone who's abusing sock puppet accounts or that sort of thing to make it to make your comments not usable by people who want to be a community. Because if you want to keep people on your site, and this is if you're a third party video provider or if you're YouTube, if you want to engage people in your channel community, then they have to be have an incentive, they, they have to feel welcome there. And having strong moderation tools allows you to build a community where you don't have to worry about a toxic members pushing people out who you would rather be there. Number three, better recommendation control. This is less from a video producer side of thing and more just a general user side of thing. YouTube's video algorithms have some issues with hiccups. I watch a video from a particular producer and I get a bunch of recommendations from for videos from other producers who are, shall we say, unpleasant. And the video is the video recommendation algorithm does not train well. I cannot just very easily train the algorithm to say, I don't want any videos from this channel at, at all, really. It's not relevant to my interests. This user is not someone whom into. Just no. I can turn off specific videos, but I can never really permanently get rid of a particular channel. Further, when it comes to discovering new channels to follow, YouTube's algorithm isn't great on that front either. I've discovered a few new channels that way. Um, I've discovered Giguk and Super Eyepatch Wolf through YouTube recommendation algorithms. But that's like it. Otherwise, as someone else mentions a video producer, I look them up and then I end up subscribing. I go looking for footage to fill a gap in a show because my footage got corrupted or, was, or I wasn't able to capture it for various reasons, for a game review or, or what have you. And in the course of finding that footage and getting permission to use it on my YouTube channel, I end up getting, uh, I end up finding a new video producer who I want to follow. That sort of thing. Relevant to this, the YouTube front page, and this is on any site, this is on desktop, this is on consoles, this is on my phone. It is utterly useless when it comes to finding out what new videos have come from the channels I follow. It is not good when it comes to tracking watched videos and progress on watched videos. And while occasionally I get recommendations for videos from a channel I follow, they come from the back catalog, occasionally a new video will come up on the front page. But far more often, I end up getting a slew of videos that are two to three weeks to be sold. If I want to know when a YouTuber I follow has a new video out, I have to set up email notifications, open email either on my computer or open it through my phone, and then, pu and then push the video to my device through the YouTube app. YouTube, you are also Google. You are the autocrat of the algorithm. Whether it's search engine results, or whether it's recommend, recommending content for people to watch. You should be able to figure this out. This counts double for any site that is aiming for YouTube's crown. If you want me to use your site in the long term, this is anyone else, want anyone else to use your site in the long term, 
then you need to present content that your users want to see. And I don't mean you just need to get a bunch of content creators on there. You need to get a strong recommendation algorithm on there in the get-go, so that when users sign up to your site and follow a bunch of content creators, that in turn, your site can then present a bunch of other content that is directly related to the content that, you're, that these users, your people are following, are putting up. If I am on Vidme, and I'm, follow, and I'm following SF Debris, and I'm following um, Gaming Historian, and I'm following uh, Nash, then what I should be getting is I should be getting retro gaming content, I should be getting uh, video reviews and uh, anime stuff, and I should be getting some humor content. What I shouldn't be getting is I, I don't need to see the videos on Vidme of people complaining about Vidme. I don't need that. So, that. Number four, fix content ID and takedown notices. So, all right, remember the name I was talking about earlier, Alex Maurer. The Alex Maurer situation has made it explicitly clear that the way YouTube handles copyright is still broken as all hell. Jim Sterling did an excellent video on the topic that I will attempt to find and put in the comments that basically gets into the fact that YouTube doesn't put any verification into their content ID and takedown system to make sure the person sending out a notice is actually a copyright holder. This creates a system that is ripe for abuse and is rife with abuse. Unfortunately, due to how the DMCA works, YouTube cannot just tell someone who abuses the system that cannot file DMCA complaints and cannot send takedown notices anymore. That's the job of the courts, and no one as yet ruled that any that a person who has abused the DMCA has a is some sort of vexious litigant. The Alex Maurer case may result in this, depending how the judge rules based on the DMCA takedown notices that were filed. But I'm not an attorney. Leonard French is, he'd be the person to determine if it's possible for someone to be declared a vexist litigant when it comes to DMCA claims. But there's the next best thing that YouTube can do. If YouTube determines that a user of YouTube is abusing the content ID system to claim advertising or deny advertising, or to send takedown notices against videos that either do not infringe on the user's copyright or alleged infringement over works that the claimant does not own, then YouTube can deny the claimant access to their automated copyright system. You don't get the web forms, you don't get access to the automatic content ID system that it normally provides the users who wish to issue copyright claims. Instead, what these people who abuse the system, whether again this is People claiming copyright of things which they do not own, purposes of extortion, or people who are using copyright claims to purpose of, for purposes of harassing critics, like with digital homicide, or people who are using DMCA strikes or copyright claims just harass people who say things they don't like. Apologies for the cell phone noise there. What would happen in the case of these users? is they would need to send a physical DMCA notice, one per video. So they have to take the time to fill it out multiple times if they're doing a bulk thing. This discourages big bulk claims that could potentially take down whole channels. To a P.O. box or physical mailing address operated by Google, and this notice would have to be co-signed by an attorney in the United States. I bring up the United States part because one of the things that I've encountered before when researching the DMCA, take, uh, the takedown notice filed against my review of Wrestle Kingdom 1, and copyright claims placed against some of my anime reviews by certain claimants that other uh, users have received from these same claimants, is there are some international copyright holders who take the stance that the Digital Millennium Copyright Act does not apply to them and they do not have to consider fair use when it comes to filing claims because they do not operate in the United States. So, 
this would mean that because these claims would be contested in a United States court under United States law, that when, by, by having a U.S. attorney sign off on these claims, it is stating outright that the, that the people who are filing these claims have consulted someone who is familiar with U.S. copyright law and has done their due diligence when it comes to, for example, there's the lawsuit related to fair use and uh, the Prince song, Let's Go Crazy, get the name of the specific case. But the result of the ruling was, when filing a DMCA claim, you must keep fair use under consideration. And this would be saying, hey, I can actually consult an attorney. I am, they consider fair use, I determine the attorney, and I determine that we have a case. And the other side of this as well is when it comes to YouTube producers, Oftentimes what happens for these more extortionate claims is they send a takedown notice, the video producer or channel holder contests it, the person filing the claim has no, in, has no intent to actually fight this claim and defend their claim in court, and after 30 days, the video goes back up. What By having the attorney sign off on it and file an actual DMCA notice, what the what YouTube is basically saying to these producers, or would be saying, and this would be the same thing if you were a, for third-party companies like, like Vidme, um, is if you're actually going to be filing claims against people who are putting videos up on here, then you need to actually be willing, ready, willing, and able to go to court. If you're just doing this to shut someone up for a, for a month, then you're not using the system in good faith. So there's that. Now, again, I'm not an attorney, so I may be recommending something that would, in fact, open up Google to a considerable amount of, of liability, even if they're doing this for people or, or, or businesses which have demonstrated that they're not using the system in good faith who are filing claims fraudulently. So... Put that asterisk over that. Number five, this is one which needs no asterisk. And that is, have more Creative Commons licenses. By which I mean, have all the Creative Commons licenses. So, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may notice that pretty much all of my videos that don't have strikes against them, or haven't been had their ad revenue claimed under content ID or what have you, have been released under a Creative Commons license. This is because I appreciate people's work that has been released under a Creative Commons license as well, and I wish to give back. I have taken, I have, with other users' permission, used footage from their Let's Plays and that sort of thing for circumstances where I don't have the footage to illustrate a point, and I have used, and I'd like to let other people do the same. But there's an issue with how YouTube handles Creative Commons licenses. You go to creativecommons.org and look under Share Your Work. I'll put a link to this page under the show notes as well. You will see that there are four types of licenses. Attribution, share-alike, non-commercial, and no derivatives. And they all mean different things. Attribution is straightforward. Share the video or material fully crediting the person who created the original work and provide a way for the to refer back to the original work so that people can get it that way and that the original person gets their business. Share alike means you share it under the exact, that whatever derivative work you make must be made, must be released under the same conditions, under the same Creative Commons license. You cannot take a Creative Commons work and release it under a non-Creative Commons license. So, for example, for one of my videos, if I was to release a video under Creative Commons license that was me talking about a news thing, and then someone put that out in the documentary, and my video was under a share-alike license, and that work would also have to be released under a share-alike license. And the third one is non-commercial, which basically, pretty straightforward, you can use the material in another work, so long as that work is not sold. As an example, someone puts out a piece of music, I use it as a backing track for something I'm working on, I can't sell it. If I put out a DVD collecting a bunch of episodes of my stuff and sell that online, 
I would have to change that piece of music or get in contact with the creator of the music and get permission to charge for that work. Things get a little gray area there when it comes to YouTube and ad stuff, but that's a separate deal. And finally, no derivatives, which is if you're re-releasing a work, you must release it as is. So, for example, and you can kind of mix and match these. So, for example, um, with um, the videos that um, the completionist is taking down, Gerard is taking down due to the other guy whose name escapes me because I'm having a bad day with names because he wants them taken down. If those videos were up under a originally uploaded under a non-commercial no derivatives license, what that would mean is you can't resell them if you download them and re-upload and re-up them somewhere else, and you can't remix them. But you can do whatever, share them, and spread them throughout the world however much you want. Now on YouTube, when you mark a work as Creative Commons, you doesn't specify which license that it uses. It's just Creative Commons, which is a problem because again, there are four licenses. So what YouTube needs to do is it needs to create a system where I, as a video producer, who wants their content to be released under a Creative Commons license, needs to select, is able to select which license I wish, of, wish a video to be. In turn, on the video, there'll be an icon showing what license is used. It can be done a couple ways. This would be done, I envision this two ways. Done in parallel. <clears throat> on the video itself, there will be an icon in the upper right, and I'm mirrored because I'm in the right hand portion of the screen where I'm holding my hand right now. And for the first seconds of the video, it would have the icon for the relevant license or licenses. This would be clickable and would, and would take you in a new window to the relevant page that would describe what these licenses are. Additionally, down here in the video description, it would do the same. Um, I'm not talking like in the show notes, I'm talking like where it has the title of the video and a bunch of other information, like when it was uploaded, that sort of thing. Uploaded number of users who've watched it, the thumbs up, thumbs down, that portion. The part that YouTube basically has complete control over. That would also show the relevant Creative Commons license. It's, sim it's symbol brief text of what it means in terms of description, attribution, share alike, non-commercial, no derivatives, and a link for do you, basically do you want to know more? Do you want to learn more about this license and what this means and what you can or cannot do with it, which opens up the new tab or new window with more information on the relevant Creative Commons licenses. This gives creators better control over their videos and would hopefully encourage more producers to release their content under a Creative Commons license. This would also build up an alternative to royalty-free music services by having more music available for YouTube or other places under a Creative Commons license that people could then use to download or what have you for their own YouTube videos and would build that up. So that's my five things that I think need to change about YouTube. Is there a particular feature you want to see YouTube implement? Any, or do you have your any thoughts on the five features I've suggested? If so, please let me know in the comments below. I find this amusing to bring this up since I've, one of my complaints is how YouTube handles comments. But my viewer base is small enough that I'm pretty sure that things should be manageable. You're all fairly decent people and are nice. He says jinxing things. Well, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.